If you've followed me for a while on social media or elsewhere, you'll probably not be surprised to learn that I'm a big MobX State Tree fan. At Infinite Red, we've used it for many years, especially with our boilerplate Ignite. It has been a part of some of our biggest projects and has worked extremely well. In the latest State of React Native survey, I noticed that the interest in MobX State Tree was pretty low. A lot of people just were not interested in learning it. I understand that. I take a little bit of responsibility as part of the core team of MobX State Tree, not really differentiating it from other options out there. I also think that there's an impact of MobX itself because a lot of people think MobX State Tree is like MobX or they think they're the same thing. They're really two different things. And in fact, if you learn MobX State Tree, you don't really need to know MobX first. Even though it's built on top of MobX, it has its own paradigms and it has its own tools on top of MobX. I'm trying to spark some interest in MobX State Tree and at least give you a chance to make an intelligent decision when you do start your next project looking at all of the options, there's plenty of options out there, at least make the decision about whether you want to try MobX State Tree or not based on reality, rather than just a perception of, you know, it's just like MobX or it's something that's kind of been around for a while and why isn't it popular and, and that sort of thing. I could talk about all the reasons you should use MobX State Tree, but I think it's best to just show you what it's like and then you can decide for yourself. I, I do know that within Infinite Red, even though we've used MobX State Tree for something like seven years now, it still remains the most popular option option. When developers start a new project, they often still reach for MobX State Tree. And there's something to that. So we're going to be building a little roster here for my rec league ice hockey team. We're going to show who's bringing drinks that game and also who's in or out and be able to change who's bringing drinks to the game. You'll also be able to add all the different players. So if I put in here Theo Brown, I'm going to say he's playing center and hit add. It should show up above, but we're going to use MobX State Tree for this. So let's start off with creating a models folder. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it however you want, but I like to create a models folder and a new model or store. The stores are basically just a root of multiple models. We're going to call it root store.ts. Now let's add our dependencies, mobx, mobx state tree. We'll import T at the top from mobx state tree. This is how you create models and other types of things in mobx state tree and export const root store t dot model and the properties we're going to have a players t dot array because we want an array of players and we need to define a player model create a new file called player model dot ts again import t and export const player model and a player model is going to have a jersey number name which is a string this is a lot like zod if you've used zod before it'll look pretty familiar. Position, which are, we're going to actually make it an enumeration, an enum, and pass in all the different positions. So goalie, defense, center, left wing, and right wing. We also need to know whether they're in or out, and we can use a boolean for that. I wouldn't probably use a boolean. I would probably use another enum, but I wanted to show off booleans. And actually, we're going to default this to true. So by just passing in a literal true, you'll see that it becomes a boolean and defaults to true. Now we could say bring drinks in here we could have a bring drinks boolean but we don't want that right now i'll show you how to model that because really only one person should ever bring drinks and if you have a boolean then that could end up in impossible states where multiple people are supposed to bring drinks and then chaos ensues so there's our player model let's import that into the root store now a model is just a definition of the shape and functionality of a particular type of data we also need to instantiate it. The way that I like to instantiate these, and you can do these using, uh, a lot of times like React context is the right way to approach this. If you look in our Ignite repository, you will find that we have a really cool way of passing around the root store instance to different components. But the simplest possible way to do this is to just have a little root store variable, export const, Export function use store. If there's no root store, then we instantiate it. Root store equals root store dot create. Players will just be an empty array to start with. And actually I'm going to tell it to always add me. So num has to be 51. Name is Jamin Holmgren. So it'll always start with this. Position has to be goalie. And am I in or out? I'm gonna leave that to the default. 
Now, this is complaining that there's not a type. So how do we get the type out of a the root store? There's actually an, a nice little utility export type root store type equals instance. And we can import that from MobX state tree and you pa pass in the type of root store. And how you read this is an instance of type root store. So now we can just tell root store is root store type and use store then will return the root store. Okay, now use store is ready for us to import into our components. If we go to our app here, we are just rendering the roster and I could pass in the root store here, but when I'm using components like this, I actually like to import the data right here. Okay, so let's start off with that. Const root store equals use store. We'll import that from the model roots, root store there and root store will come in. And instead of just hard coding in the first value, let's wrap that in a map. So root store dot players dot map, and we'll get a player. And then we need to use the player model here. So we'll go player dot num, we'll go player dot name, player dot position, and then whether they're in or out. And right here we could say player dot in and it would be true or false, but that's not exactly what we're looking for here. And you do see Jamin Holmgren and this is working. If I refresh, it will show up. But what we want is a string here of whether they're in or out. So I'll say in or out as this. And let's go back to the player model. There's a really cool thing called a view. So think of a view as like a computed property or something along those lines that you've used before. It's taking the data that's already there and then transforming it in some way. So let's add a view. We're gonna get the player as part of this definition. So we have our in or out getter here and we just need to return player.in in or out. And you can then see that in and out is shown here, but it's not actually reacting when we try to change anything, nor can we actually add someone here. If I were to try to add Theo as a center, it's not doing anything. So let's go fix that. If I go back to the roster, there's an add player when I click and this has a callback. It grabs all the data, like the number, the name and the position. We need to be able to add the player. So let's go to the root store. And in the definition here, we're gonna do an action. So actions are how you mutate the data within the store or the model that you are working with. Add player and we'll take a number, which is a number. We'll take a name, which is a string. And we'll take a position, which probably should be an enum, but I'm just gonna use, or a union, but I'm just gonna use a string there. Store.players.add, and now we need the num, the name, and the position. Sorry, not add, but push. And so it should add the players to the array, but again, if I do this, it's not actually adding it to the roster. And the reason for that is because the roster is not yet reactive. So we need to add another dependency, mob x react, and we could just add mob x react, but we're gonna use mob x react light because it does everything that mob x react can do, except for it doesn't support class components, which we're not even using here. And so let's go root store dot add player, num, name, and position. And I already noticed one little TypeScript problem here. It's saying that there's a string or undefined. So if you try to do it in runtime, MobX state tree will actually give you an error and say that this is a string. Value string five is not assignable to type number. The value is not a number. Not only are we getting type inference here, but we're also getting runtime type checking just like Zod. I need to go ahead and parse int here. That satisfies that. It's also complaining that this could be undefined. I'm just going to solve it the simple way by saying I know these are going to have values. And then once I have the add player, I need to also make roster observable. So we already added MobX React Lite. We're going to say observer and wrap that in our higher order component and import observer from MobX React Lite. Let's refresh the screen. I'm gonna go one, Theo, and say center and hit add and it shows up. There we go. Now let's do another thing. Let's make it so that you can go in or out for a particular game. You'll notice that the class name shows in and the in or out method is there, but we need an on click. And when you click on click, let's toggle in out. So let's go ahead and make that action as well. Go to the player model and 
in addition to the views, we have an actions block. We're gonna have a toggle in or out action, player.in equals not player.in. That's all we have to do, it's mutable, right? But it's protected. So now when I click this, it changes from in to out, to in to out, no problem. Very cool, but we need this class to also change. So if I go back to the roster, it says in right there, but I want the class name to be rendered. Player dot in class is what we're gonna call it. Let's add another view. Get in class, return player dot in, and we'll say it's in or out like so. If I refresh and change it from in or out, it changes from red to green to red back and forth. So this is reactive. The in class method is reactive and it automatically re-renders with the proper class. You can see how it all kind of works together. But there's not we're not showing who's supposed to be bringing drinks. And this brings up a really cool part of MobX State Tree where you can have references to other models. So drinks player is going to be a reference to a player model, but it could potentially be undefined. So we're gonna say t.maybe. It's sort of like putting a question mark in TypeScript after this, but we can't do that because it's a JavaScript, obviously. So if there's a drinks player, then it needs to show up. So if I go back to the app.tsx, you can see drinks has nothing there. Let's go root store, and we do need to bring it in const root store equals use store, and it'll be root store dot drinks player and if there is a drinks player we'll output the name and if there's not one then we'll say none and we also need to make this an observer as well because it needs to watch that drinks player let's import that and then back in the roster we need to add another on click so it needs to be root store dot set drinks and we'll just pass in the player directly into this set drinks action go back to the root store let's add it set drinks and we're gonna get a player. Again, remember instance type of player model. That's how we say this is an instance. And then we just say store.drinksPlayer equals player. In order for this to work, we actually need to change this number to an identifier number. That means that this will now be sort of the ID. It's like in a database design, you need to have an ID for a particular entry. We're just gonna use the player's number. Of course, two players could have the same number conceivably in your system and you'd wanna use something a little bit better than their jersey number, but that's what we'll use right here. So it's all networked together. You have the player, it's got a number, name, position, and whether they're in or out. The root store can refer to potentially a player as the the player who's bringing the drinks. And if I click bring drinks, it now shows my name up there. And if I change this and I go ahead and say, Theo is now gonna be there as a center and I hit add and I say bring drinks. Now Theo's the one bringing drinks and I can kind of click back and forth. Now Theo's out, so I'm gonna click bring drinks. You know, it's now me. It all kind of is reactive and works together that way. So you can kind of see how you can build on your stores your different models and instances, you can add views, you can add actions. There's even things like asynchronous actions and what are called flows, which are really kind of complex. It's almost like Redux sagas, but done in a way that doesn't suck. And render it all out and have it re-render only when the things that are being accessed, such as their names, numbers, positions, etc., that's the only time they re-render. And I've done other videos, not on this channel, but in, on my Twitter, which show how targeted these re-renders are, and it makes it very performant. I realize that's kind of a whirlwind tour of MobX State Tree, and I jammed a bunch of concepts in a very short amount of time. Here's the thing, MobX State Tree is for grown-ups. It's for developers who wanna build serious apps, who need all of these features, and you're gonna need all these features if you're building something serious. You're gonna need the ability to do async actions. You need the ability to do computed views or derived data. You need the reactivity of being able to re-render only the properties and the components that are actually being accessed and used to render your views. And MobX State Tree has all of this stuff built in. It's very rare that you're having to reach for other tools in order to re-render when state changes. What we found is that you can build very complex state across an entire app and maintain the developer experience as well as the user experience that you're looking for. 
Now there are some downsides to MobX state tree and I could talk about those in a future video. Of course, hit that like button and hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. I know I don't put out a lot of videos these days because I'm unfortunately kind of busy at work and this isn't my day job. In fact, I'm ignoring a bunch of email right now to put this out, don't tell anybody. But I really appreciate you watching the channel. Please do write in the comments if you have any questions about MobX. Really appreciate it. See you all next time.